Alright, it seems to be working now. Cool. See that sound normal? Sound like a chipmunk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't try reading the comments. I'm definitely going to die reading the comments. <laughs> Let's see if the uh, comments are keep working. <laughs> yeah, I got the mood lighting. I got the candles going on. Uh, and I'm going to have the candles for, you know, Diablo dungeons. Hey, happy Friday night, everyone. Um, welcome to Streaming Test 3. Uh, what we're aiming for here is that uh, the audio sounds normal. Uh, the image looks reasonably good, uh, so it's not flickering. Um, and the comments are working. I think all three of those are good. So <laughs> I'm not <laughs> I, don't like I don't sound like a chipmunk on helium. And um, the stream looks okay room for improvement uh, and um, and the comments are not crashing we might have a good uh, it seems like a good progress great <laughs> yeah okay cool nice um, greetings oh let's see I'll just uh, hello greet this random person Emily 80. <laughs> so like th this is like the biggest ad for Diablo ever. Um, so great game. Um, uh, but I listen, I got to use something for streaming. Can I just stream nothing? So, and um, like, you know, once again, my, I, th I have to applaud the uh, game makers and at, at Blizzard uh, for making a great game um, what I'm playing right now is the regular season uh, so there's th there are two sort of add-ons I guess uh, season one which is about to end season two which is starting this is the what they call the eternal realm um, and just to give people a little bit of background um, who don't know have never seen this game before uh, there's there's four world tiers uh, so there's sort of like a is like a basic a veteran veterans level two Nightmare is level 3, and then Torment, which is beyond level 3, is level 4. So we're in world tier 4 here, which is <laughs> Torment, which is a level beyond Nightmare. Then within uh, Torment, there are Nightmare Dungeons. The Nightmare Dungeons range from 1 to 100, um, and we're, we're going to play a tier 100 uh, dungeon. So this is le the hardest dungeon in the hardest level of Diablo. And... Um, Death is common here, so although my name is um, I Will Never Die, this is, uh, I say this in irony because actually I die a lot. And uh, my title is uh, Rampaging Goat, because, uh, you know, rampaging goats are pretty scary. And um, yeah, so for those who play a little bit of Diablo, I'll tell you about the, the build and uh, what, what I'm aiming for here. So, uh, you can see my, basically, my, my gear. Um, this, this is a game that is, like, really, uh, if you love math and statistics, uh, you'll, lo <laughs> you'll love Diablo. It's, it's, it is uh, math and statistics next level. So, you have all these attributes for each uh, bit of gear. So, on my helm, I've got an increase in life. I get a bit more life when I kill something. I have an armor gain. I get a damage reduction when shaped into shape shifted into a werewolf. Uh, the I get more damage reduction. At the, at the highest levels, you need a massive amount of damage reduction and armor, or you're just going to get instantly killed by a tiny skeleton. So, um, <laughs> unless you're, you're armored like a battleship. Um, you just instantly die on tier 100 uh, dungeons. So this really, pretty much everything is aimed at maximum armor, maximum damage reduction. <laughs> this was a uh, person saying. <laughs> <they got laughs> uh, 
<laughs> Emily 80 <is> saying. <laughs> well, uh, Emily 80, I'm going to do a tier 100 Nightmare Dungeon. So if you want to come along to that, you're welcome to, to do that. I'll just uh, accept that. Um. <laughs> you want to give me money? Okay, sure. <laughs> you really do have 200 million gold? I don't, I think that's like, uh, what can I give you? I don't really have anything. Um, I don't know if you can even use my stuff. Um, I can give you, how about this really nice potion? This is, this is a really, this is a really nice potion. There you go. <laughs> okay. <Thank laughs> I know. You. You're welcome. <laughs> um, <laughs> thanks for giving me crazy money. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. Well, do you want to? I I'm s I was gonna do a t uh, like a like an intense dungeon, but I s I kind of want to. I kind of need to explain my gear a little bit to people for what it's worth if they're playing Diablo. So uh, anyway, I'll, I'll just go quickly through my gear. Um, the 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 game designers clearly love something called critical strike, which is like a special strike. So um, I'm amping up critical strike chance here. Um, the stats are necessary to activate certain attributes in the uh, Paragon board, which you'll see the Paragon boards are wild. Um, then more damage reduction, more armor, basic skills grant 20% damage reduction. Uh, Hurricane is plus four rank, so that, that's what matters, just having Hurricane at all. Um, then I got movement speed, just so I'm not moving super slowly. More armor when I'm in werewolf form. Damage reduction when injured. A little bit of dodge against distant enemies, not that important. The Ghost Walker uh, attribute is uh, for imprint is really important uh, because I can I it's it prevents me from getting stuck in a giant pile of monsters and and w having them all just pile on me. So uh, when I have this what's called unstoppable, which is not strictly speaking unstoppable, but when I <laughs> when I have this attribute unstoppable, um, I can walk through the enemies, which is so I can't get just uh, crushed by the monsters um, in, in like some sort of jam. Um, then this weapon is the great weapon, based after the crone. Uh, it amps up my claw attack, which is a basic attack. What really matters is that the claw is also a storm strike skill. I'm, I'm getting kind of in the weeds with Diablo, so if you've played Diablo, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, if you haven't played Diablo, this is all going to sound like nonsense, so my apologies. Um, but the thing that matters here is that uh, that's a storm strike because um, and I'll, I'll explain why in a minute. Um, but let's go through the rest of the gear. Again, more damage reduction. You'll note uh, damage reduction, especially from enemies that are poisoned, because I'm going to poison all the enemies. Uh, I'm going to. I'm going to. I've got something that enable me to spam poison creeper. So I'm going to spam. <laughs> so I'm going to poison the enemies. And Ed Scott, you can poison a ghost in this game, which you have to like have a lot of suspension of disbelief. But whatever. It's, it's, this is a game mechanic. So I'm going to poison everything around me, and that's going to give me damage reduction against those enemies that are poisoned, which is very important. Um, more uh, barrier generation. So I'm going to be constantly uh, producing a, a barrier. Um, that barrier is really important for damage protection, and the barrier is actually the secondary attribute of the barrier is my primary attack. Uh, also very important, basic skills, 29%. The way I rebuild the barrier is by attacking with the basic skill. So basic skill attack speed is very important. Um, then I'm also making the enemies vulnerable all the time, so boosting vulnerable damage helps. I'm slowing the enemies, so boosting uh, slowed uh, damage is important. Uh, more some more max life, so I can't get one hit killed. More critical strike chance, and then this imprint of natural balance is important uh, because I'm going to be alternating storm skills and earth skills. And when I uh, cast the storm skills, it buffs my uh, earth uh, critical strike damage. When I cast an earth skill, 
it but increases the critical strike chance of storm skills. Critical strike, super important. Um, if we go to spirit boons here, this is sort of special for a druid. Um, just taking 10% uh, less damage from elites, which is, uh, th those are sort of the tough monsters in the game. Um, I currently have it set to 10% 10 10 attack speed. Depending on the dungeon, you might want to have an increment of max life. Uh, atta atta attack speed is, if, if, I, if I don't get one hit killed in a dungeon, ta attack speed is more important than a life boost. Um, then you can pick one of these attributes to, to have two, to pick two of. In this case, I've, I've chosen um, the kind of deer uh, <laughs> one, and um, I'm, I'm, uh, this is a really important one. Critical strikes have a 20% chance to reset the cooldown of, your of, of my companion skill. Now, uh, it's kind of weird, but Poison Creeper is my companion. It's a strange buddy to have as a, you know, some Poison Creeper that's going through the ground as your, as your buddy, but anyway, it, that's, that's kind of how it's classified in the game is Poison Creeper is your companion. Um, I don't know if you want to snuggle up to a Poison Creeper in the middle of the night, but uh, that's, <laughs> that's what we got here. Um, so normally Poison Creeper would be a 20 second cooldown, but because I'm going to be critical striking really fast, uh, I'll actually reset this cooldown to be effectively about four seconds, maybe five seconds. Um, and so I'm going to be able to cast Poison Creeper over and over again. Um, and the modifier on Poison Creeper is really important. I'm getting a 20% gain on critical strike chance. Uh, so when you add all these things up on the critical strike chance, uh, you look at the critical strike chance. My base critical strike chance is roughly 38%. Um, then I've got a 6% gain for nearby enemies, 43%. Uh, with uh, Poison Creeper active, it goes to 63%. If uh, st storm skills are, um, uh, are activating critical strike, I've got like another 11%. So I'm like basically three quarters of the time I'm going to be doing a critical strike. Uh, so most of the vast majority of my attacks, and I'm attacking very fast. Uh, so that that is what's going to reset the companion skill. So making Poison Creeper something that instead of being cast occasionally is going to be cast frequently, like every three or four seconds. Um, then uh, <laughs> masochistic is cool. Um, critical strikes also will heal me. So the there's kind of the the damage flux and the, the healing flux, and I don't try to balance the, the, the rate at which that they're, they're damaging me, I'm matching that with how much I'm healing. So th these strikes are constantly uh, healing. Um, that's, that's pretty helpful. Um, and then I'm also using Blood Howl to, 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 to heal and to increase my attack speed. So then going to the skill tree. As you can see, this game is deep. Um, it's also if you think the game's like, not that deep, but it gets really deep. Um, so here I've got uh, my basic attack, Claw. Because Claw also does a Storm Strike, I've got Storm Strike uh, to get the secondary attributes here, to immobilize enemies and make them vulnerable. Um, uh, the, then I, this is like a thing I just added, which is to add Landslide. But Landslide, you'll notice, is not on my attack bar. That's because Landslide is um, on my uh, weirdly on my gloves. <laughs> So when I do Poison Creeper, it also casts Landslide. So the reason I have uh, the Landslide picked here is for the secondary attributes. Uh, so it'll also immobilize enemies. Um, and then uh, if I have um, immobilized enemies, I'm going to again get a, a critical str a strike increase. In fact, a guaranteed critical strike um, with, with critical strike damage. So this is, this is awesome. I just added this. It, it's actually made a big difference. Um, and it helps against bosses. So you're, you're limited to only have having five, five attacks in the, or I should say six attacks in the, in the, in the, in the, the main bar. So effectively, I get uh, sort of a, a seventh attack uh, this way. And, and then uh, going to here, uh, Earthen Bulwark, this, the secondary attack for Earthen Bul Bulwark, the Rock Shrapnel is my actually my primary attack. Um, that's why I have it on the right mouse key. Uh, sh I should say primary damage. So the primary attack is claw, uh, but the primary damage creator is the earthen bulwark, and that's making the basically the sh my, my shield, my barrier, explode. Uh, 
that is actually the primary dynamics generator. Um, and then uh, I've got Cyclonama, which is sort of nice to have, but actually, again, I, it's not really the damage or the damage reduction of Cyclonama, but rather the fact that enemies are knocked back and slowed. And, and so slowed is, if you think back to the thing, I'm doing extra damage to slowed enemies, um, and it's also, again, making them vulnerable. So, and then Blood Howl just helps increase attack speed, and it's uh, sort of like a helps you heal. So, um, I get my Poison Creeper. Again, I just really, I really want Poison Creeper for immobilization and a criti critical strike increase. So this immobilization just kind of lock the monsters in one in one position, so they can't just pile just pile on me. Um, and then. I'm uh, really not trying to boost damage much, but I'm really uh, trying to have fortification. So there's like kind of three layers of defense. There's your health, there's being fortified, and then there's barrier. So I've got kind of the belt suspenders and crazy glue for uh, damage resistance, uh, or you know, protection of one kind or another. Um, th this is pretty important. So when I attack enemies, uh, th they're slowed, so this is also helping just put them in the slow category. Uh, and Venom boosts my critical stripe damage. Uh, and then Toxic Pause just means that when I do a critical strike, I'm going to poison them. So I poison them both directly and with the, f the Poison Creeper. Um, and these, these are some uh, attack buffs. Uh, just uh, Nature Magic skills, which is Storm or Earth, uh, increased damage to elites. Uh, and I mostly want to just get over to this thing where I get I'm going to get 18% damage when I do my uh, bulwark attack, which is an earth attack, because uh, I'm going to do that bulwark attack immediately after casting storm strike. Um, then over here, uh, I really I, ca I kind of want this guy. So when they str when they hit attack me, when they hit me, um, it actually is like a jujitsu move. Uh, when they hit me, I get fortified. So um, staying fortified in tier 100 dungeons is very difficult. Fortified drains very quickly. So in this case, the more they hit me, the more I get fortified. So that's pretty helpful. And then down here, uh, I really am looking for this one, which is shape shifting into a werewolf gives me 12% damage reduction. Um, I'm actually not using, um, so these are the ultimate skills. I'm actually not using an ultimate skill attack. So depending upon your perspective, um, this is either better or worse. Uh, but normally, like most most players will, will use an ultimate attack. I am actually going to do a tier 100 Nightmare Dungeon without using an ultimate skill. I think that's actually better, but some would say it's worse. Usually you don't give up an ultimate skill, but uh, I am in this case. Because um, I think Poison Creeper is a little better. I could be wrong, but... Uh, but Poison Creeper, especially with Landslide, I think is good. Um, and then, this is really important, I use Nature's Fury, uh, which um, when I cast a, an Earth sk or Storm skill, it has a 30% chance of, of, of casting the, the opposite type of, of spell. Uh, this really, I think, is also cool because it like lights up the screen. So you, you'll see like tornadoes and lightning. Um, so, <laughs> and then, I get this knock-on effect when Poison Creeper casts Landslide, then Landslide has a 30% chance of, of triggering a Storm skill. So you get this cascading effect of really, Nature's Fury is the right description. It looks insane. Um, and the Paragon Boards. So the Paragon Boards is like, I don't know, Dungeons and Dragons crossed with Go. It's, I don't know, maybe the best analogy. So you can pick different Paragon Boards. You can rotate them. You can join them in different ways. <laughs> like I said, this is probably the best ad for Diablo ever, but um, so, you know, I'm using Territorial here. I'm using Undaunted here. This is, I, I'm really, again, trying to optimize my damage reduction um, for the most part. So I'm, I'm getting increased damage, but I'm really getting that 10% damage reduction there. Um, also 10% damage reduction here. Um, Outmatch to boost the boost these nodes. Um, the mo that's this is the node I actually want to boost the most, which is the boost determination to maximize uh, my armor. 
Um, and then uh, Protector over here. Ten again, I'm just looking for that 10% damage reduction from the barrier. Uh, then this is actually a pretty important Slayer node for another 300 armor. Um, getting this one for 100 armor. And then the final one is uh, Werewolf. Um, and again, I'm getting 10% damage reduction in Werewolf form. So for those who are curious, that's that's uh, that's my build. It's it's like a heavy Nature's Fury build, uh, which uh, is appropriate for a druid. Um, yeah. So with that, um, let's see, I pick this guy. I can do most of the tier 100 dungeons uh, unless it's got armor reduction. That one is tough. All right. <laughs> Alright, Emily, I think you're, you're going to have trouble staying alive in this dungeon. <laughs> yeah, lightning storm. So, in this dungeon, uh, there's uh, lightning will pre periodically strike. If you're not in the lightning dome, you will die. Good. Looks like when you climb, you're automatically in the dome I or something. <laughs> All right. You can see the poison creeper is uh, resetting a lot. Um, and if you want a game that uh, really illustrates uh, the importance of compound interest, uh, that corpse boy is going to kill me. <laughs> Bounce around a lot. I like all the special effects of, uh, you know. You can see the uh, cyclone armor, hurricane. Uh, 
Uh, but like I said, the getting all these uh, damage elements to multiply is uh, really important. I forgot to mention, uh, this uh, symbiotic aspect is really important. So when uh, Nature's Fury triggers, it doesn't, uh, it, it, Nature's Fury will trigger a, will reduce the cooldown by eight seconds uh, if attached to your uh, necklace or whatever, amulet. Uh, you really have to be on your toes in these, uh, Tier 100 dungeons, you're sort of kind of one mistake away from dying most of the time. Well done. <laughs> It's really hard to see what's going on at times, I have to admit. Those corpse bow, the corpse bow can win to kill me. Thanks. You're welcome. All right. So the thing you gotta watch uh, these uh, these timers. Uh, gotta watch the keep track of those timers as well as the health bar. Um, so you gotta time the attacks. That's why the the counters is counting down uh, to refresh uh, the various attacks. Uh,
right here. So. Oh man. Watch out for that guy. If he does that overhead attack, uh, that'll one that one shot kill me. Ah! Whoa! That was close. So I'm like uh, using uh, the ghost walker aspect to basically attack these guys, walk through them and hit them from behind. So they can't get that overhead attack, uh, can't kill me. The overhead sort of slam attack that they got. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Emily. I this lightning effect is c pretty cool. It's like it's so ominous with this like lightning countdown, countdown to death. Um, Come with me. <laughs> So, I mean, as you can tell, I'm a huge fan of gaming. Um, I think I think <laughs> I think video games are a real sport, um, and uh, I have a lot of respect for those who are good at video games. It's it's really hard. Um, I think it's it's esports of the future, or I mean, I regular sports too. But I think esports are, are you know. Anyway, I love video games. <laughs> Obviously. Look. Now this guy, I'm gonna. It's actually we've, we've already we've, we've gotten past the uh, most difficult part of the game. I'll nail this guy super fast. The, oddly enough, the. Uh, the, the final bosses on the uh, tier 100s are uh, easier than the dungeon itself. You can make if you can make it through the dungeon itself, uh, then uh, you're good. <laughs> so let's uh, resurrect Emily. Up, oh, Emily. I should point out, like it's if if you're not level 100 and you do a tier 100 dungeon, you're just gonna get die instantly. So I suspect that Emily is actually quite skilled, but um, it's almost impossible to stay alive if you're level 80 in a tier 100 dungeon. Um, judging by the fact that <laughs> Emily had so much gold, I think Emily is probably a very skilled player. Um, so we can head back to town. Alright, so that was it. Um, 
testing, streaming on the X system. Uh, <laughs> Emily says she's not skilled. She bought 8 billion gold from a Chinese hacker. All right. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Because, <laughs> I mean, it takes a while to accumulate that kind of gold in this game. Um, so, um, anyway, I, I, like, I've, you know, uh, when I've been working, you know, they actually find video games to be weirdly a stress relief. Uh, so, it seems weird that, like, <laughs> you're welcome. Um, video games are kind of a stress relief um, because in order to uh, not die in a tier 100 dungeon you, you have to focus so you, you can't um, normally get so many like apps open like browser windows open um, being forced to focus and on a video game actually sort of and killing demons in the game quiets the demons in my mind so I actually you know find it to be a kind of a good thing to do um, it's also like something you could do with friends. So, and, and like a lot of games have multiplayer. So, if your friends are in different cities, uh, you can play with your friends. So, um, you know, none of my friends are online right now, but uh, I'll often play with with friends uh, in, you know, San Francisco or Boston or other parts of the world. And um, I'm in Austin right now. So. Yeah, so this is pretty cool. Um, so now you know what uh, is what I this is like. Frank, this is actually my main recreational activity is is playing video games uh, and playing with my kids and playing with video games. And um, you know, at times I've been able to to play video games with my kids to so get you know to do both at the same time. Um, I for with my older boys, I used to play. Uh, Diablo, I, I should say uh, Mass Effect 3, the multiplayer of Mass Effect 3, which is uh, really quite a fun co-op multiplayer. So, and um, yeah, so, yeah, I'm going to like try to answer some questions that I see from the comments. It's cool to see that the comments are still going and uh, we're able to keep the stream working at uh, high volume. So, uh, yeah, and uh, you know, we'll add X streaming for Xbox and PS5. Um, you know, we're 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 not trying to, you know, uh, do do everything better than every other app, but but we we want to say that okay, you if any if you do want to do something on within the X system or the X platform, you you can do it if you want. Um, I think the very specialist apps are still going to be probably better than us uh, in a lot of ways, uh, but. You know, I think we can be the best uh, generalist uh, app, and um, there's some value to, to being a generalist app for, I guess, for discovery and for interaction, interacting with the largest number of people in the world. So, um, yeah. So <laughs> we have a crazy number of people online here. So it's cool to see that uh, the system is taking the load. Um, uh, congrats to the. Uh, X uh, dev team for making rapid improvements in uh, you know the space of less than a week. Um, so because uh, I'm I'm seeing all the all the comments here. I've got basically an iPad open uh, connected to the stream, so I can play the g the game and I've got full screen on the game and I can I can see the the X feed on the side here with an iPad, so I can see with I don't know it's a five ten second delay. I can see all the the comments that people are are making. So we don't yet have uh, an X app for the PlayStation 5 or uh, the PlayStation or Xbox, but we, we will do that. That's on the list of things to do. Um. <laughs> yeah, the Raptor engine is much more complicated than the, the Diablo skill tree, although Diablo skill tree is pretty complicated. Um, and uh, I have to say I barked up the wrong tree many times, or at least as, as you go through the various levels of difficulty. Like I started out being a weir bear and using Pulverize with Shockwave, which is pretty fun. Pulverize with, uh, <laughs> wow, that looks cool. Thanks, Emily. I like all sparkly now. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. 
I think these like cool emotes. Wings of the creator. That's cool. Um, so, and anyway, it's been a blast playing uh, Diablo. I might try that the season two. See what that's like. Um, and um, I was thinking of trying Baldur's Gate three and you know a few other things. It's really just kind of like you know, half an hour a day, every second or third day type of thing is uh, roughly my playtime. Um, so, we're not currently ren rendering pick and pick uh, on the screen itself, but uh, I, I can see if I, the easy move is here, is I just uh, have an iPad next to my main screen and I can see myself with a bit of a delay uh, in the bottom right, and I can see the comments on the left. So it gives me a bit of a feedback loop to see what's going on. Uh, it works, you know, so. I'm not definitely not trying to say this is ASUS quite yet, um, but uh, it's cool that it works at all. <laughs> um, so. Yeah, I heard Baldur's Gate 3 is amazing. Um, <laughs> um, let's see, I was, uh, <laughs> I have, um, I was going to play some music, but I kind of forgot to play that. Um, Yeah, so I, I guess I'll do like a semi-regular streaming uh, as requested. Uh, I don't know, maybe once a week or once every, every couple weeks. Um, I'm mostly just doing this to um, to test the system, figure out what uh, improvements we need to make, and um, you know, sort of combined uh, work and play, I guess. Um, is like you know, somehow video games are. Like part of work, which is cool. <laughs> <laughs> 